Hi all, welcome to another session of A Day in the Life of DevRel, where I'll be executing DevRel tasks, and you can watch me as I do so. In this task, the goal is to quickly map out and write the first draft of the portal page that will end up on the ETH Global website. The context here is that Hedera is a sponsor of the ETH Global Singapore 2024 Hackathon, and these are the materials that will be promoted to participants. It is worth noting uh, or I should say, it is worth thinking a little bit about the developer segments or personas here. ETH Global events are predominantly attended by developers who are Ethereum native. Most attendees develop on Ethereum itself or layer 2 networks where Ethereum is layer 1. If the network that you are devrelling is neither of those, then you're in for an uphill battle. I know this firsthand from four years at Rootstock and also a year and a half at Hedera. But I also know what works and how to win this developer persona over. In short, the answer is EVM compatibility. And let's break that down into three simple steps. First, make the claim that it is EVM compatible, which might seem obvious to you as a DevRel for the network, but you shouldn't assume that the average Ethereum dev thinks that it is. Second, emphasize the what's in it for me from an Ethereum developer's point of view which is that all the skills that you have are transferable and all the tools, libraries, and frameworks that you are used to still work. Finally, step three, to seal the deal, demonstrate that it actually works because claims are just words and demonstration is proof. And this formula really works. Hedera went from zero submissions in the ETH Denver 2023 hackathon to 17 submissions at the ETH Denver 2024 hackathon. Now that's proof. Okay, let's wrap up on that tangent about using EVM compatibility to attract Ethereum developers to build on your network. Back to the task at hand, which is creating content to go on this developer education page for ETH Global. As usual, I'll do an intro at the beginning, which you've just heard, and then work silently in the middle, which is up next, and this part of the video will be in fast forward mode. Then there'll be a recap at the end. Let's begin. All right, so I've assembled my starting point. So I have two windows, right? The first is this one. The It's a Google Doc, right, where I have um, essentially a table of contents, um, which is effectively a skeleton. Um, each of them, each is just has uh, subsections, um, and each of the sections has bullet points under, under each heading. And each of these bullet points is intended to become approximately one paragraph of text, not uh, a hard and fast rule, but you know, uh, more or less, that's what it's going to be. And uh, shout out to my colleagues Abby, Ryan, and Crystal for your inputs in this. The second that I think that I prepared is another window with a lot of tabs, right? As you can see here. Um, so while I was going over these bullet points in the skeletal document, I was thinking for each of them, um, which resources would be relevant to link to, and which resources. I should extract and summarize from when I write the document. Right? Then I went through various internal channels, GitHub searches, Google searches, etc., and opened up all of the tabs that I think are relevant. Um, and as you can see, most of them are actually um, from docs.hedera.com, right? Which is our, which doesn't really surprise me because that is our um, de facto developer documentation, right? So that's uh, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, and so the reason that I do this, the reason that I open all of these tabs is because I want that uh, initial set of resources easy to access so that I minimize the chances that I lose my trains of thought as I write the content in this document. Got to maximize my productivity. Let's begin.